on this computer recording. Okay, so today is the 12th, our second meeting um, for our Book of the Month Club. Um, this month is February, so Go Givers Sell More is what we're on. And we were reading up until the end of the first section, basically up until you, um, you get to the law of compensation. So the end of um, the first law of value. So um, let's start with Michelle and see what you wanted to share with us that stuck out the most with you, um, or if there's anything you wanted to just kind of discuss that maybe get your wheels turning. Let me shut my office. Um, as far as a concept or any ahas you got while you were reading? Uh, well, I did highlight in the first chapter, create value. Um, and I know it was reiterated kind of throughout um, the five, um, what they call them? I don't know. Laws. The five laws, yeah. Value, the five laws. So excellence, consistency, attention, empathy. And it's, you know, interesting, appreciation. Um, I mean, it's things that we've talked about putting, you know, but, but I guess reading it and putting it into words, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and creating a value in our product and also believing in our product. I think that the authenticity, you know, really comes through with that, mm -hmm. um, appreciating customers and giving excellent service, but it's not, I, I really like how they reiterate that you're doing these things not only to get a sale, you know, it, and it is back to like what you always say is building that relationship and it's ways to build relationships and, um, and then still, you know, talk to people. I, I mean, I'm relating it to Sensi, but talking to people about how um, different and genuine um, our product is compared to whatever they can get at the store, but then also having that relationship with somebody so that they do continue to come back because they see, I'm not just trying to shove a product down their throat. I'm really genuinely, hey, I thought about you. This is something you would like. Or, you know, even with samples, it's, hey, try this out. Let me know how you, you know, what you think about it. And just um, creating that value without putting on, you know, pressure of like, if I share this with you, I expect you to buy from me. Um, yeah. And it's also, you know, with, with building a team, um, plus, you know, showing people appreciation and being uh, a leader too. Um, people can buy from whoever they want to, you know, so it kind of, that kind of stuff came up, especially um, chapter five, where is it John? Um, they come to him and they say, hey, we really want you to do something. He's like, well, our company wasn't, it was like in beta mode. We weren't we hadn't launched whatever and being honest with somebody and saying, Hey, I'm going to refer you to a, a company that's going to be able to give you what you want. And you know, it's sad, but a lot of times in different companies, uh, people aren't used to that level of honesty. Um, so just always being um, honest and genuine. So, And that's like a, you know, just that right there really does prove that law of attraction. If you truly believe in it, like if you're really in it for, for them and benefiting them, you know. if you really trust in that law of attraction, you know, you giving more than taking and being in it for them, it just, the law just proves that eventually it'll come back somewhere, somehow you're and It's not because we're looking for the, for it to benefit us. It's just the way the law of attraction works. And so when we're willing to give and not look for a return, um, the, the beauty is that it'll come back to us somehow, somewhere tenfold. And it's just being able to um, remember and put the time and the effort in and being able to wait, you know, like be in it for the long run for it to come back to you. Because most people, they, it, it, they are in it for right now. They are in it for the result right this second. And they're not, and when they don't get that result, they're looking, um, which one is what, which basically creates a barrier on the law of attraction to work because, um, you're, it, they're in it for themselves. 
and they're looking for the outcome instead of um, that's going to benefit them instead of serving the other person. And then they end most people because they are in that selfish mode and mindset um, and all their actions have an interior motive for themselves. Um, they, they realize it's like they're fighting with a wall, which they feel like because they are, it's because they're the law of attractions going against them instead of for them. And, um, that's when they quit because they don't see that there has to be, you, you know, you've got to put that energy in and almost like prove to the laws of attraction that you're, you're willing to put that time in, you know, and, um, you know, prove yourself that, you know, you really do want to serve. And, um, that's the big message that most people miss. And if you catch it early in your business, you see the results in many different ways. And it may not be that they buy or they post or they join, but it may be that you find a best friend or you find somebody that helps you with daycare that you've been looking for, or, you know, um, a mortgage broker that helps you get your, you know, mortgage down or something. But right. if you're always looking to truly serve them and if it doesn't, and if you don't have anything to serve, or you don't have anything to give them that they're looking for that you at least tried. And then, um, interesting enough, those are the people that see that genuine, that genuine intent. And then, um, those are the people that tend to come out of the woodworks, you know, thinking of you for things and, you know, and recommend things for your life, your business, whatever, give you great referrals. Like they talked about that. They may never, ever buy from you or do business, but they end up giving you an amazing referral out of nowhere. Um, right. I'm sure you guys have people in the time that you've been in the business that somebody, you know, didn't really do a lot for your business per se, but you know, like if you would boil it down to content or dollar value, but if um, you look at it, they gave you greater value than, you know, in other areas or with some other person or something that outweighs the actual, you know, um, uh, value in dollar amount, which would they talk about how we, you know, gauge value, which I thought was really, really interesting. What do you think, Liz? Um, I think I think you're all absolutely right. But to to kind of add to what is being discussed on the say on having the sale not about you, it's about them, the other person. Mm -hmm. That struck a chord. I mean, I've heard that before, but it's it struck it struck a chord with me different this time. It, it felt like it was more because um, you know not so much about the sales part of it, but like. You know how well we sometimes we, we fear bringing up recruiting to people or even purchasing something it doesn't I mean our fear is we're thinking about ourselves at that point you know so and, and and to overcome those fears we have to give people the option to say no to us it may say be no it may be it may be yes but if we don't, it's, it's like I, we give them, we don't say anything. We're not giving them the option to even say no, you know? That's so true. I always look at it as, um, you know, it's funny, Liz and I just had a recent discussion about like faith and, um, I looked at our, you know, obviously we know that our company is the owners are very, very big in their faith and all about generosity and teaching people about, you know, God and love and, you know, just the way the world life lessons and stuff. And I, when I thought about it, it's like, okay, if we trust when we're talking about our love in God or in our faith of whatever that may be, it's so easy to share about it. Right. Um, because we truly believe that it's something that will benefit and add to somebody's life. So if we look at our business and our opportunity, because we know it's not just a product, like all of us, that are in this business, we're not in this business because it's a great warmer or the wax smells so great. You know, that was the beginning. And that is like, that was like the tool or the like little nugget that got the, us to start thinking about the, you know, more about the business. But what keeps us in the business is the culture, the people, the, um, the experiences, the opportunities of, 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 you know, experiences as far as what we receive and see in life, like travel and, you know, learn um, all of that. Like one of the things, Michelle, that I knew just by getting to know her over time is that she would be so, this would be such a great place for her because she is just like, 
a, a sponge of loves to absorb new things and learn about and grow on a personal level. And like, she was telling me how she loves to go to like seminars and, and like, um, motivational speaking. I was like, Oh my God, she would love Sensi. I mean, it's all free. And that's what we all are like Jones Don is, you know, that's our, that's our drug is like learning. So for me, it was e easy for me to say, Oh my gosh, you would love to be a Sensi consultant. And I didn't look at it as like, oh my gosh, I'm pushing it on her. It was, it, it gave me the freedom to say, this is, this is something that's going to benefit her. And if she doesn't do it, it would only make me sad because I knew how much it would fit her lifestyle and who she is. But if she said no, it was, at least I gave her the opportunity to be involved with everything that she already does in life, but she gets to be around people, like-minded people that love to enjoy the same thing she does. And then also she gets a world of wealth of information just at her fingertips for free 24 seven. And so that's, if we look at it like that and really get to know and build those relationships, we find connectors sometimes, not all the time that, you know, we'll be able to say, you know, wow, this is something that may benefit this person's life in some way. And, you know, and I think that's probably the hardest thing with recruiting is because we're almost put in a position that we feel like, well, who am I to say, this is something for you? Well, we're really not. It's, we're just the, I always look at myself as like, I'm like the, um, I'm like the middleman that has to basically help you get access to the, to the opportunity. It's not me giving you the opportunity. It's not me that's going to change your life. It's that in order to be a part of this, you have to have somebody basically, you know, we say we're we'll sponsor you in. So I always communicate and say, you know, I, I would sponsor you in order to become a consultant instead of like making them look like, you know, you need a sponsor to, what are some other things in life that you need like a sponsor to have access to do something? Like AAA meetings? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that Liz, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> okay. Well, Accountability. AA helps you get a, a, away from, I don't know, an addiction and see a different way of life. Okay. Yeah. That I, I left myself open for that. Didn't I? Um, but I guess well, like, I think if you want to live in like New Zealand, you need a sponsor to get like live in the country. Hey, see, that's a good thing. You need a sponsor to help you get access to the country or you need, oh, you need a sponsor. Like you technically, um, Liz, you and Troy are basically technically a sponsor to your, um, to your exchange student in order yes. to come into the, to the country and live here for X amount of time, a month or whatever. So mm -hmm. if we look at it as that, that we are just like the people that are um, giving them access to something they want to experience. Um, and then the, the real opportunity is what they do it. Cause even though Troy and Liz are, you know, bringing that this person into their home, it's really what they do with the opportunity and how they receive what they learn and how they truly take in the culture and what they experience is how they're going to get the ex opportunity and what type of experience they're going to have. Right. I mean, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because they can have all the, they can be the nicest people in the world, give them all the opportunities to, you know, experience America but if they resent against it and they don't want to learn and, and open their minds to new things, it's not going to be as beneficial as if they were. So same idea, I would say. And to, um, get, the full, and to get the full experience, you really have to immerse yourself in it. Absolutely. So, you know, you can't, you know, so, you know, I, there's so many consultants that say, well, this doesn't work for me and that doesn't work for me. Well, are you really diving into it? You know what I mean? Like I put a post on my team page the other day I said training is important because no matter what job you go to, you're going to first of all get training Yes. And every and every so often, whether it's quarterly, yearly, or when there's a new, something new being implemented, guess what? You get training, right? Exactly. So, That's a great point. And it's so hard. They think they're just going to have to click, click, you know, click join um, show some products and then, you know, that's all they have to do. And the paychecks are going to come in. They don't really, yeah, it, it could be that simple, but as far as like supplementing 
a part-time job income, which most people are looking, when they're thinking of extra income, they're thinking, I don't have the time to commit even 20 hours a week to a part-time job, but I need the money that I need that a part-time job would give me. So, and then they expect to not, even a part-time 20 hour a week job, you're gonna go through training. You're gonna go through your three months of, of um, probation and you're gonna go through somebody sitting by you, by your side. And the only reason why they sit by your side is because there is the, it's a hands-on business that you have to go into and learn. We can't do that here. So we do the training, you know, uh, uh, over the phone or, you know, in, 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 on the internet or whatever. Um, I had one other point, but I, of course, got on a tangent, so I forget. So Aubrey, are you there, Mama? She has us muted. I'm trying to unmute her. There she is. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Hey. Hi, there you are. Oh, your hair's so cute. Thank you. I cut it all off. <laughs> so I was super excited reading because it talks a lot about, like, you don't need to be a salesperson because none of us feel like we are. But <laughs> I even have hopefully new teammates that feel like, oh, well, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a people person. So... I was excited just because you don't have to be that kind of person as long as you like put other people's needs first, which I feel like a lot of people want to do that anyways. And you like create value, then like sales and money will follow. Absolutely. And I liked the part about like you create your own economy. So if you know, money's tight for other people, you can still provide that value where other companies or consultants or whoever may be um, providing less value in tougher times. <clears throat> so I like that a lot just because, I don't know, I feel like it talked a lot about authenticity, which is something we're all striving for anyways. So mm -hmm. I was happy to hear like a lot of what we're already trying to do and implement pretty much reiterated again. So I feel like it pretty much said like, hey, you're, you know, on the right track, you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing and it kind of put it in different words and <clears throat> new examples which helps confirm right you get that confirmation yeah. that way when you hear it in different yeah. ways and i i love how um you know everything we do learn from sensi they are reiterating all these amazing messages in different ways and so when we read it from other resources we realize we're really getting amazing content from sensi and yeah. it's not like it's just coming from nowhere. And they're really teaching us life lessons that can be implemented anyway. Like, you know what it was interesting to me, what popped out is that, um, like when you address somebody, how they talked about you say, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, instead of just like, hey girl. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you know, I realized that with certain people, I do do the, the, hey, you know, hey, you know, Aubrey or whatever. And I realized I'm like, there's certain people that I am on that level, but then I think that I need to be, I'm not on that level yet. And I need to, even though I want to be, I have to be aware when I'm on that level with them yet, that kind of relationship. And so it was interesting, like, um, even though Liz and I are on the, Hey girl, um, uh, uh, relationship level she still like greeted me today when she texts me hey good afternoon she didn't say hey she said good afternoon and I was like yeah. wow that just must be her just natural way of greeting people which is good because you know that is it's respectful it makes you put it puts a smile on your face and you feel like value like even though I'm you know she's a really good friend of mine and she could just say hey girl what's up she still gave me she made me feel valued when she said that to me today so I don't know if I didn't tell you that today Liz but I wanted to wait till this um because when I was rereading that part I was like you know I need to be better at that and so everybody I called or text today I was like good evening. <laughs> and I felt so like good about it. I was like, Hey, that makes sense. So, um, I did a little Facebook live on, um, no, not a Facebook live, a YouTube live. And then I posted it on our group page. I don't know if you guys watched it, but it just really stuck out the money side about, um, excuse me, 
the it's on page 30 and it talks about it says the first question should be does it serve and then does it add value to others and if if answered to that question is yes then you can go ahead and ask does it make money so i think we hear a lot about money making activities which are absolutely important for us to be focusing on but i but i love how this reminds us that we also have to first ask ourselves is it serving somebody by like call you know texting or calling or whatever or contacting these people by letting them know you know to try to get an order for them or whatever are we trying to figure out a way to serve them first like and i think we all all of us are we all know about the you know you know knowing about what they like and saying hello how are you doing how's your family but like you know like okay for instance i'll just use an example because i have one today um I met a lady in um, August at, a, at an uh, event. She bought like a couple bars that I had on hand and they were discontinued. Well, when it was like oatmeal cookie or something like that. And so when oats and honey came out, I was like, well, it has oatmeal in it and I should ask her. Well, I told her like a million times during January, of course. And of course she didn't get back to me until after the end, until the next day on February 4th first, excuse me. So when we went to world tour, I asked if everybody had oats, oats and honey. And so I ended up getting four. Well, so I just texted her today and said, Hey, you know, um, I did, I found four oats and honey for you exclamation point with a smiley face. And I didn't say anything else. And she said, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. She ended up getting a six pack, you know, adding two other bars. But what, when I went ahead and told her the extent of what I did for her is like, I made sure everybody, you know, I asked everybody if they had anything and I bought them from Lady. Like she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. You are amazing. And I said, well, I try to do whatever I can to make my clients happy. She said, you definitely made me happy. So instead of just saying, you know, oh, I got the four bars. I wanted her to know how much I really wanted to make her happy. Oh, hi. Sorry, mm -hmm. squirrel. <laughs> oh, she's so funny. Baby. I was trying to keep her out of the camera, too, because I knew it was going to happen. I trying know. to keep her. <laughs> oh, oh, hi, baby. Hi, Mama. What's her name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah, what a pretty Aww. name. Oh, I miss Aaliyah. Oh, so <laughs> sweet. Um, anyways, and I'm sure we all have those type of stories, but, um, you know, when we're training our team members, they really sometimes don't get how just doing that extra something and even explaining like, um, verbalization of letting them know how much we want them to be happy. You know, like I could have just said, Psh, shit lady, I tried to contact you five times in, in January and you, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you did not answer me, you know, and I, I obviously contemplated buying the bars just, but I was like, she's, she hasn't been very like, I hate to say it, between you guys, kind of flaky. So I'm like, I'm not going to be stuck with these oats and honey bars, you know? But then when I was able to swap them and not, nothing was going to be out of my pocket, I was like, well, I'm going to try. Right. Um, and so it's a lot of consultants would do that. They'd be like, well, I went, I contacted this person and they never responded. They must not be interested, blah, 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 you know, and, and get, instead of being like, okay, well, is it because you needed the order in January or were you really trying to find them that fragrance that they were, that they would have really loved? Do you know what I mean? So when you train your team members, ask them those questions, like, are you serving first before you're asking yourself, you know, is this going to make me money? And that's, that was a big, and I think, again, it's something that, like Aubrey said, it's a confirmation of what we all naturally do, but are our, are our consultants actually doing that? Um, probably not, unfortunately. So, um, anything else you guys wanted to bring up? Yeah. Um, that kind of stuck out that you wanted to chat about or? Well, the one thing you and I talked about just today about the Mac MacGiffin, am I saying that right? MacGiffin? I, I, the way I call it is a MacGiffin. I don't know. That might be wrong. <laughs> what do you guys call it? Oh, that. <laughs> MacGuffin? MacGuffin? MacGuffin. 
on page 19. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think everybody knows, but I, I've, I've never really had a, like a value, like for the product, <laughs> but I do love the company. You know, I think that's what's kept me around as long as I have been around is I do love the company. We love going to reunion. We love going and, you know, going to world tour. We love, I like going to the meetings, you know, I, I enjoy the camaraderie. That's, that's, I think the draw for me, like the draw, like to be around people who are like-minded, who have enthusiasm and who have, you know, of have a value to, to contribute to others. So I think that's, that's the draw for me. And I think I've lost sight of that, um, uh, you know, for, for many reasons, but I think I'm, I'm slowly trying to get back to the, the reason why I originally joined and not so much because of the product. I think it was more because of the possibility and the people that, that are surrounded with that possibility. Absolutely. That was definitely a great um, concept that I'm glad they took. Because here's two things that one thing you may not know, you may know about me, but one thing I don't know if you guys know this, Becca Levi can't do fragrance. Yeah, I know. If she comes in your house, you have to turn off the Scentsy warmers because she is so allergic to fragrance. And so um, she's a millionaire in Scentsy. And so it's a perfect example is you don't have to be this, you know, over the hill, I use every product in my house every day, all day long, in order to make this business a very successful business because it's a product that other people tend to use. Thanks, babe. And, that's probably, where, and, and again, that reiterates it's not about you, it's mm -hmm. about the other person and what you possibly value for other people. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. You, never, you never know what's gonna like, they may like, like me, like I just like the, you know, the company part of it. And that's the draw for me. And somebody else can be like, I cannot live without my washer whips. You know? <laughs> like Michelle Brooks, that's what got yeah. her. And that's what's it, that, you know, and then she was able to expand on that. But for me, it was just the concept of there was no flame and to be able to have fragrance in the house. Um, and then, and then, ex but really got me interested was the, the, um, the, um, the uh, cause warmers. But one thing that's interesting, guys, is that I have a low sense of smell. So I need really strong scents for me to be able to smell it. So there's not a lot of scents that I actually, I don't, not all of them I can use because I can barely smell them. Um, sometimes I'll use them because I know that other people could smell them, but I can't. You know, but if I want to smell them, I have to use a certain type of, um, a, a real strong one. And so, you know, we can learn from that, that we can't take a no for an answer immediately when somebody says, I don't do fragrance, when it comes to buying, hosting, or joining, because you can use somebody like me, somebody like Becca as an example and say, oh yeah, unfortunately it's not for everybody, but I'm sure, you know, do you happen to know anybody that it does do fragrance, that does love their house to smell good, that does love body products that have fragrance, you know? And because if somebody asked me that, um, like for instance, um, when I wasn't able to use the body products when it was layers, I used to break out, so I couldn't wear them. So I would be very honest with everybody, but I'd say, but my mom loves it. My, you know, my other, you know, my clients love it. And so, you know, I'm not going to not offer it just because I can't use it. Um, and I think we, uh, the problem with a lot of consultants is they lead with what they're interested in and what they like, and they don't realize that they're missing out on such a huge opportunity um, to sell, to, to get parties booked, as well as um, building a team because they think that, okay, this isn't what I like, or this isn't what I use, or I'm not like half the time I forget to turn on my warmers or I leave them on all day long for weeks and I forget to change my wax. The only time I change it is because I do it. I, I train myself because I train my, my consult, I mean, not my consultants, my, um, my clients every wax Wednesday, I'll post something and I'll go, Oh, I guess, I, I guess I better change my wax. Um, but some weeks I don't. And so it's not like I'm, Oh my God, I have to have my sensi. Um, 
that's not what I think about. I'd rather sell everything that I have if, if it's going to, if somebody wants it, I'm, you know, I would rather make somebody else happy than me keep it for me, even though I bought it for myself, if that makes sense. So those are just concepts that, you know, that's what we lead with the, oh, if you love the product, you should become a consultant. That's an easy, but they even talked about it in here that that's not that doesn't necessarily make the best client um, consultant or salesperson, even though we're not considered salespeople because they miss so many opportunities. Um, I forget even what they said. I wish I, I think I highlighted it that, um, hold on. Let me see where I found it. Cause I thought that was really interesting. It's in the MacGuffin part, isn't it? I just went past it. Um, news here. It means that right what you're saying. You know, say, say it again, what you were saying, Jess. About the fact that, um, you know, somebody that loves the product isn't necessarily going to be the most successful consultant. Um, it's great to have passion about your products. Oh, it's page kind of, 21. Is it page 21 to almost? Yeah, it says like it ends with, but you don't necessarily have to love it personally. And then the next paragraph says, what you do need to fall in love with, head over heels, moonstruck, gaga and love is a process of helping people get what they need and want of creating value. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> but I think too, like going back to, if somebody loves a product and that's what they're gonna talk about, then they're gonna turn off all, the, all those of us, like I would be like, I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to pitch anything. That's not yeah. for me. I have a job, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So that may work for people, but again, it was professional development, being around positive, like-minded women. Like Sensi was a tool to bring us together. Sure. I love the product. That's a bonus, mm -hmm. but you can love a product and be a bunch around a bunch of jerks. <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? I mean, and we kind of touched on that, you know, somebody that was completely off to selling Sensi because of the mean girls that were pushing that person to something. And then the right person came along with a different script that was probably just a genuine, authentic person that said, this would work for you because you want this, 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 this in your life. And since he's that vehicle, it's like, oh my gosh, how refreshing. Same product, love the product, but two very different approaches from two different types of people. So again, it's taking, you know, but obviously group number one had a different vendetta, you know, and at the end of the day, if they're selling 20 products and treating everybody like that, they're burning a lot of bridges, you know? And again, like this group is a very positive, group so you know that you don't want to be around mean girls it's like i could be around mean girls maybe in my day job you know what i mean so <laughs> it's like i want something where you know there's support and there's whatever you know there's there's a lot of different things and since he's just that tool and the wax warmers are a tool if you love them on top of it awesome if you don't then it's not about you but it's all the other things that you're able to bring into your life because of that vehicle. So true. So true. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, you just made me think about when I started buying Sensi, the consultant that I bought from was very just about her, about getting herself, girl, I need, I need to get, you know, 20 more dollars because I'm going to be kicked out. <laughs> and that's all she'd say to me. And I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know, like she wouldn't explain to me nothing. You know, she wouldn't say, do you need anything? She'd just be like, girl, I need like $20. You know, da -da -da. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't even have $20, but, <laughs> but I'm like, I could buy a bar but if that'll help. Whatever, girl, whatever you can do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so like, she never talked to me about make, you know, she knew how broke I was. When, when somebody tells me I can only afford a $5 bar, that would have made me be like, wow, maybe since he can help her make some money, you know, but she didn't even think about that. She just thought like, oh, psh, okay, that'll help me get $5 towards my $20. So I don't get kicked out. And, um, so I never even went there in my brain that this is something for me or that it's an opportunity for me. 
But then when Cambry came along in 30 minutes, I knew more about the company. I knew more about the, the, the feeling side of Sensi and the opportunity of fundraising for autism and all these other things. And I was just like, so blown away all this stuff I didn't know about. And I'd been buying for over a year and I didn't feel like she was in it for me. I mean, it was, she was in it for her. She was literally like, and then the funny thing is, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but I remember when I talked to her, I was like, can you help my friend be better at what she does? <laughs> I literally said that to Cameron. Oh my gosh. And that's when she's like, well, why are you a consultant? And I was like, what? You know, didn't even like cross my, I was like, like, what are you talking about? You know, but two totally different styles, you know, like she was all about her and I remember her saying about hosting, but it was so like how it can help her, not like that I can get free and help off items or anything. She was just like, girl, I mean, and I'm making fun of her because that's the way she talked, but <laughs> and that's rude of me, but it's just because I couldn't stand her. But she's like, girl, she's like, um, you know that only $150 gets like, you know, rewards and stuff, you know, she's like, do you need Christmas presents and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, but I can't afford $150. And, um, she, I remember ordering for Christmas. My mom gave me money to buy Christmas presents for my brother and my sister's families. I got like a warmer and three bars. They had those packages back then for each of them. She gave me money to buy them each a warmer and three bars and herself. <laughs> and I was like, it was like, almost $150, but it wasn't quite $150. And she didn't even say like, do you want a half off item? Do you, you know, she did nothing. She didn't say that I was close to $150, nothing. Cause I could have called my mom and be like, mom, I need 30 more bucks. You know, <laughs> like, Cause then I'm going to get this, this and this. So those by not informing people what their opportunities are, it's about them. It's either she's saving the rewards for herself or she's thinking um she's it's about her because 150 dollars is a lot of money to her so she she probably was like oh she's already spending 120 dollars. i'm not going to tell her that 100 another 30 bucks is gonna do you know what i mean like she didn't let me make that choice whether i was broke or not i personally knowing who i am i would have called my mom up and said mom <laughs> i need 30 more dollars and then you're gonna get free stuff and you know what I mean but she she yeah. made the choice for me so those are how I learned I learned to be a good consultant on how I was treated bad as a as a client if that makes sense yeah. So, um yeah anyways I really think that I'm trying to figure out a way like I'm gonna I really feel like this book is like the best introduction to the business like even though we're all seasoned, it's, it's nice to know that we're getting new concepts, we're getting clarity, and we're just seeing the way we run our business in a different way, and we're getting a lot of, like I said, confirmation. And, and, it, and it applies more to just direct sales, you know, it applies oh, absolutely. to others in any kind of environment. So I think it, 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 it speaks to people in their language, so to speak, you know what I mean? Because even though you, like you say, you hear it all the time, this book, I think, has a, a, a different way of kind of communicating that. And even like, um, on a side note, um, I, I was, um, my husband's been doing some research because he really wants his artwork to take off, you know, soon. And he's been doing a lot of research and he, he was listening to something the other day and he says, you have to listen to this part of this video I'm watching. And it talked about, you know, the, a guy being in his booth at a vendor event for artwork and um, how he, people think like you invite them into check out your stuff and say, you know, hey, look at this, look at this. And, and you give them samples and right away they think that you, you them telling you thank you is payment enough. Well, that's, and that's, and that's not like always the case instead of saying, Oh, acknowledging the thank you don't acknowledge a thank you and just say well I'm glad you like that so do you like this too and keep showing them stuff because when you acknowledge that thank you they think oh okay I already paid them by saying thank you thank you for your time mm -hmm. and you know and then they move on and that's like closing the conversation 
That's wow. the closing the deal for them. Interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Very much so. Wow. Hmm. I just wanted to share that. <laughs> no, that, that makes great. a lot of sense. Yeah, because you can kind of turn that in. What did you like about it? Or did you like mm -hmm. it? Or is it to this or to that? Can I ask you more? Or whatever. I mean, you can kind of take uh -huh. it. Take and it I think most consultants do take the thank you as a, okay, they don't want to talk to me anymore. They got what they needed. Mm -hmm. You're so right. And that may not, it's like, okay, we hand them a sample of, let's say Luna washer whips and they say, thank you. This smells good. Thank you. Say, oh, well, just so you know, we also have, if you like the fragrance or, you know, what are, what do you like about it? Because we also have Luna in this, this, and this. Right. And then I'm like, okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 which most of us do <laughs> you know me I'm like here bye run away <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and it's um I think it's just training our brains and reminding our brains that if it's not about us it's about them it's asking questions of like again if you like it then what do you like about it you know and then Michelle you said something about you know, asking them, you know, can you tell me what you, what you think? Making people feel valued by asking their opinion and they, they, people feel valued when they feel like their opinion actually is important. So a lot of times I would say, I'd say, you know what, since he really values um, our, our clients in, um, input because they really try to put it into play. So any feedback is very, very appreciated. Because we want to know what you like or don't like or what your suggestions are. And it's like I see their faces light up like, wow, like the company is interested in what I have to say. You know, and I even say, I'm like, we even have like a place that we can go put in our ideas and your ideas. And they really look at it. And I give them examples of like, you know, they were, you know, clients have been asking us, were asking us for years about body care. So and in my, in my parties, I'll sometimes say, you know, the room spray, everybody loved it and they were spraying themselves and, you know, Heidi got back, it got back to Heidi that everybody wanted to smell like Scentsy um, and then that people were asking about body care and so that's how the body line came out. So, you know, your, your input is very important. So it happens, you know, and they're like, they feel so valued and they feel a part of the company. You know what I mean? Like, oh wow, this is something that you know, they really, they value me as a client, you know, which also is the planting the seed of them feeling valued as a future consultant. If, if it, if it goes down that journey, you know what I mean? Because so, they already know that they're valued even as a client, that they really will feel valued as a consultant later on. I've done that with the room spray. Cause I have one in my car and I'm like, yeah, I'm stinky. <laughs> <laughs> How it's like, oh, it smells good. Whatever. Um, and I've had people, because I've had like lush gardenia in there, because I love it. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I smell like my gardenias, you know. But uh -huh. it, it, that's funny that people have done that, because it's true, it smells good. <laughs> yep. yep. Silly. So, um, there's like a story behind almost all of our products. I love sharing the Scentsy Buddy story that Orville loved, this, the psychological statistic that, you know, clients, uh, that kids that grow up with stuffed animals, you know, from zero to five tend to be more loving and caring, you know, adults. That's a really cool one. Yeah. Yeah. I and like to share that with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I those, have the, um, the autism, the buddy guy, what's his yeah. name? Benny. Benny. He's the in there with my autism warmer in my classroom, but Aww. the kids, and I tell them, I'm like, smell it, cuddle it, touch it. And they're like, really? Aww. Yeah. If it calms you down, <laughs> right? Oh my god! How about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Well, all right, ladies. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording because I have a question to ask you guys afterwards without okay. recording. So let me go ahead and stop. Um, unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about really fast with the any last minute inputs, Aubrey. Aubrey. Um. I just wanted to say my grandpa used to buy the room sprays from me and use them as cologne. Oh, really? Oh, how funny. Yeah. Swear. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that good. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Yeah. That, see? That's a good one. See? There's always a story behind everything. And the stories are the most, like, what really touch people, you know? So those are things we definitely need to share. Thank you for sharing that, Aubrey. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop.